All right, looks like we are live. All right, welcome everyone. Late night, long day today. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about the discipline of happiness. And I was doing some reading today and I realized that, wow, happiness actually does take a lot of discipline and, discipline and consistent effort in order to achieve that happiness. And it's something that you have to actively work at and focus on and concentrate on in order to bring that happiness into your life. And today I'm going to talk about a few different things that can impact that and things that you need to be able to watch out for in order to improve that happiness and be more focused and disciplined with it. And I know I am like the last one <laughs> that I thought I'd be talking about discipline because I usually actively resist that kind of stuff. Um, but I realize that I am disciplined in certain areas and the things that we deem important, we can be disciplined in those. And um, it's a matter of understanding why that's important and what it is that we need to do in order to focus and make that a, a priority in our lives. And um, so for me, I know with the past that I have had, um, it's not exactly set up and you don't get a strong foundation going through the childhood I had um, with uh, learning how to focus on happiness. There was a lot to be unhappy about in in the childhood I had. There was things that was obviously there were happy times. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have survived at all uh, had there not been those things. Um, so when I look at um, the, the times where I struggled with suicidal thoughts, where I um, struggled with whether or not I could continue on with things, those aren't exactly the thoughts that are going to lead you to happiness. So learning how to have the discipline to overcome those things um, is what you need to do uh, to be able to Sorry, I just have to block some hammerheads here. Um, so, um, understanding that those darker thoughts that you might be wrestling with um, often aren't always something that are yours. Um, they are seeds, programming, whatever it is that you want to call it, um, that are deposited into our subconscious and we are influenced by the people that are around us, by the people that we associate with. And so sometimes that unhappiness that we feel um, can be a simple change of changing our environment, changing the people that we associate with. And so one of the things that I do, um, and before we dive into the solutions, I want to let you guys know of who I am and where I come from. So my name is Tina. I am a happiness coach and I help people that are struggling with feelings of uh, suicidal thoughts, uh, anxiety, depression, frustration, anger, resentment, um, any of those kind of things where you just feel stuck in those more negative emotions that feel like they're dragging you down, holding you back and not allowing you to progress. And I use uh, trauma-informed uh, approaches plus I also use change management techniques that I learned in business and corporate when I was in transportation and logistics. So I combine the two and I help bring those uh, to light. So when I talk about these darker thoughts, these negative uh, thinking patterns that are set up either in childhood or maybe work environments or whatever, we learn to adapt, we learn to um, believe certain things like, um, <laughs> I know some of the things that I survived in childhood are just through sheer stubbornness and strength of will. And so while that might help you to survive, it may not be the thing that allows you to thrive and actually be happy. And it ends up causing you to go through this um, unnecessary resistance. So yes, you need some resistance in order to 
to grow and challenge yourself and stretch yourself. But if you have too much, then it actually ends up harming you rather than helping you. So learning to understand and navigate uh, how much you need in order to uh, push yourself to be able to grow and not just um, like it can't be all easy. There is a discipline to it. And so conditioning our mind and having that discipline, especially if you have to rewrite old programming that um, maybe was actually quite helpful and helped you get through the tough times, maybe helped you get a promotion, get uh, the job that you wanted and all of those kind of things. And so we might have actually been rewarded for those negative behaviors, those negative thought patterns that um, end up getting to us to a place where we're stuck, right? Um, so number one thing that I find that is helpful to me um, is to start with paying attention to energy, um, your personal energy um, and the energy of the people around you. So if, you're, if you go out with a set of friends or you visit certain family members or you um, go to a certain job and every time that you go through that situation, that environment, you come back, you feel drained, you feel exhausted, you feel like you're doubting yourself, you're doubting, um, like you just don't feel good about yourself. Maybe you become critical of yourself and you start to wonder like what's wrong with me and if you are going through that and it starts to drain your energy and it pulls on your life force, then you need to pay attention to that pattern and start to recognize, is it the entire event of just going to it? Is it um, maybe the way that I'm looking at the situation? Did I have certain expectations that ended up not getting met, but maybe I didn't actually communicate those expectations? So we need to start to, A, identify the situation that is causing us to feel drained. If we go into a job every day and we come out of it and we're like, fuck, I can't stand my life. I hate my life. <laughs> then you might need to actually look at either a different job or changing your perspective at that position, right? Of what is it that you were expecting out of this role? What is it that you were expecting out of this friendship? What is it that you were expecting out of this relationship? And if that is not happening, then you have to re-examine and understand, is it my expectations that need to be adjusted or is it the environment that I am in needs to be adjusted to something that actually fills me up. So then you have to actually start looking for, okay, so what are, who or who are the people that when I am around them, I am uplifted, I am energized, I feel motivated not that it's somebody else's responsibility, but just being around certain people's energy, you start to feel motivated because maybe you're inspired by the things that they're doing in their life. Maybe they're working on challenging things. Maybe they're learning a new skill. Maybe they're learning a new um, uh, language or a thought process or they're diving into spirituality or they're becoming physically fit or something that they're, they're working towards improving and changing their life. And just by being around those kind of people, you become inspired, not because they're telling you what you need to change. And I, in fact, that's usually the environment that will actually drain you because in order for you to truly change and be happy, it doesn't come from somebody telling you you're a worthless piece of shit. I, that has never changed anybody. Um, you telling yourself that you're a worthless, worthless piece of shit, that is conditioning that you received in childhood that you actually got rewarded from behaving that way. And um, But that doesn't necessarily make you happy. That makes you um, 
feel validated in who you are by feeling like if I'm strong enough, then I can't be hurt anymore. And so, which is completely different from being happy. Yes, you get that strength and that kind of feels like happiness, but it's it's different, right? Um, happiness, you don't have to fight for it. It is something that uh, flows to you, right? And it is an energy that flows to you and through you, right? So it's not something that gets stagnant, gets stuck. So pay attention to that energy. Is it flowing? Does it feel natural? Does it feel comfortable? Not in a complacent comfort, but in a... Um, like a, a gentle breeze on a warm day, right? You know, something that is there that brings a sense of peace, a sense of comfort in that way. Um, that is something that I look w with and figuring out, is it the environment that I'm in or is it my expectations? Because sometimes it can be my expectations of what I thought something should be that ends up uh, Thank you. Thank you. Those are my paintings. <laughs> I really love doing this. this. is one of the things that does bring me a great deal of happiness. Um, sometimes, because I get expectations about how I think they should turn out, and then I get all pissed off about it. <laughs> and then it's only after I take a few steps back and I adjust my expectations, and I come back and I look at them, and I'm like, oh, those are actually pretty cool. I like those. I can't believe I made those. And so sometimes our expectations can mess us up and mess our happiness up um, just because things are not the way we thought they should be. Um, so acceptance is a big key at being able to tap into that happiness factor. Um, the second thing, so that is <laughs> the second thing, we have to examine our expectations and our beliefs. Um, so if we have a certain belief that we can only be happy if X happens or Y happens, um, and then when that happens, then I will be happy. Um, so that is always delaying our happiness. That is always like that carrot on a stick kind of thing that you're always chasing it but never end up getting it. Great for kind of motivating us, but that won't bring us happiness and fulfillment that we're looking for. Um, so yes, taking actions in the right direction, that is focusing on those kind of things of knowing that we are moving in a direction that we believe is going to make us happy. Now, if we're going through the motions of things that because somebody else told us to do that and somebody else says that this is the right thing to do, but we are not aligned and the energy within us does not feel that, then we will not end up getting that sense of happiness, that fulfillment, even if we actually achieve the goal. Why? Because we're just putting in the work for putting in the work. And oftentimes when we're doing that, what we're doing isn't something that we actually enjoy the work or believe in the work. We're doing it because we don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to look bad, which is much more of a fear-based energy versus a love-based energy, right? Um, so examining our beliefs um, and because if we find ourselves going through the motions because we believe that this is what we're supposed to do or this is what we should do, then we will not achieve happiness or fulfillment out of taking those actions, even if we get the results, because um, then it's more of an expectation. And all that we're doing in that situation is setting ourselves up for resentment when or if that expectation isn't met. If we don't actually achieve the goal, then all that does is create extreme unhappiness and resentment and pain and anger and frustration and all of those kind of things rather than focusing on these are the actions that I know most align with my values, most align with what I believe and who I am and that I believe is a good thing and if you are operating in a way that you don't believe is a good thing right I want you to look at 
if somebody did this to somebody you loved, if somebody did this to somebody that you care about, would that action still be in alignment in order to achieve your goal, right? Um, so that's something that we have to look at And only you are going to be able to determine that because only you know the full extent of your circumstances. And even if you try to explain your circumstances to somebody else, more than likely you're going to forget some other details, some other pertinent information or how, you know, stories from the past connect and uh, cause you to believe this certain uh, thing. So learning to examine our own beliefs and our own patterns and our own expectations is the key to that happiness, right? Because otherwise we'll always be conditioned to seeking outside um, sources for, is this the right thing? Am I on the right track? Is this what I should be doing? And if you're asking if this is what I should be doing, then more than likely you're looking for somebody else's approval and that is sometimes can bring you a little bit of fulfillment and happiness, but not that rich sense of fulfillment and happiness. And what happens there is you're setting yourself up for um, that you will only take the right actions if that will uh, align with their beliefs and their um, expectations, right? So this is why we have to understand our own beliefs, our own expectations, right? So if we find ourselves in a situation where somebody says, you have to do A, but you know A is not a correct thing and you still do that because they said that's the way it is, then you're going to end up setting yourself up for some disappointment. You're not going to be happy with yourself, even if you achieve those goals because now you're going against what you actually truly believe. If you don't believe A is the correct path, but you go down that path anyway, then you're gonna feel terrible. And unfortunately, sometimes we end up going pretty far down that path before we realize that situation. And then we have to do a U-turn and kind of come back and kind of go, shit, that was the wrong path. And I kind of knew that, but I didn't listen to myself. I didn't. I hadn't done that in, internal examination of understanding what was important to me and will this actually make me happy. Um, and then the third thing that is really important is we have to actively choose happiness and understanding what actually makes us happy. And that can be a big challenge um, because I know for myself, I struggled with, well, I'm happy if the other people around me are happy. So it was more that people pleaser energy. And I was great at making other people happy. They were not so great at making me happy. <laughs> and that's the thing is people aren't aware. How can they be aware of what is going to make you happy if you are not aware, you haven't done that inner work to understand what will truly make you happy? So when you put everything on everybody else, of if I just do the things that make them happy, if I fit in, I follow their structure, I follow their expectations, I get their approval, then we're always going to be stuck because guess what? You can do all, because sometimes you can actually do all the right things, meet all the criteria that they have set forth for you, and they're still not happy. So now what do you do? You based your happiness on if I follow their expectations and they're happy, then I will be happy. What, what happens if you follow all of their rules, you follow all of their expectations, and they're still not happy, or they change the rules on you? Or they move the goalpost and you're like, well, they're not happy. So now I'm not happy. And now I got to continue to work harder. I got to continue to do more. I got to continue. And we've never stopped and asked ourselves, does this actually make me happy? Oh, thank you, Gig. Thank you. I appreciate you. 
And so it's really understanding I have to actively choose what will make me happy, which means it gets pretty friggin' scary and it requires a lot of strength, discipline, and consistency to actively choose what will make you happy. Because if not, what's going to end up happening is I'm always going to be in this state of fear, of looking to outside sources. Will this make them happy? And I'm not saying you have to get dysfunctional about it and that you can't do things to make other people happy. But what I want you to do is start paying attention to when you've done those things, do you find that you're now waiting for that reciprocation and maybe it's not coming back? You have to pay attention to that because now that's not making you happy. Maybe it takes a lot for you to get to the point and you recognize, hey, this isn't, this isn't flowing. This isn't coming back to me. And if I continue to do this, then I'm continuing to try and get somebody else's approval rather than really focusing on, hey, maybe if I redirect that energy I'm pouring into everybody else and I pour that energy into understanding what actually makes me happy and doing more of those things, actively disciplined at bringing more of those things into my life on a daily basis. No different. You can't sit and look at your life and go, well, I'm not happy. I've done all these things and I'm not happy, right? And they're not doing this, so I'm not happy. They're not doing that, so I'm not happy. And it's kind of like if you're not actively identifying the things that do make you happy and actively uh, making time for those in your life and doing those things, then it's kind of the equivalent of the person that says, well, I can never get in shape, but they don't work out, they don't do any physical activity, they don't eat correctly, and then they complain that they're not where they want to be. And so it is the same kind of thing. You have to build this happiness muscle, if you will. You have to actively work at it. And it's through these three things of paying attention to the energies that you feel when your own personal energy um, and making sure that if you are feeling depleted, that you're filling your own cup. You are building yourself up of understanding what are the things that make me feel recharged, right? Um, and and actively doing those. I care about my family and it hurts to see them fight every day because I care about them so much. Yeah, that can be a challenge of when you're you're watching family members, they fight and then you're just like, that can be really draining. Um, I don't know. You tell me how how do you feel when you see them fighting? And what are the things that you do to try and stop that? Or do you stop that? Because sometimes one of the things that we have to do is we have to practice the art of detachment. And um, that's not like cold detachment, that's not like cutting people off, but detachment is taking that step back from the things that are draining our energy and focusing on the things that are lifting our energy up. So rather than trying to get other people to stop fighting, take that step back and you go do something that brings you peace that brings you happiness, that brings you joy and fulfillment. And if they want to fight, then we let them fight. They will get tired eventually, right? So it's the four stages of fear, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. So fight, there's only so long that you can fight before you physically run out of energy, right? Imagine, you know, somebody in a UFC fight or something like that. There's only so much physical energy that we have that we can invest in fighting. Once we run out of that physical energy, then we go into flight mode and we run away because we realize we're running low on energy and we need to get away because we can't seem to beat this opponent or this person 
or this thing that we're actually trying to fight against. And even if that's a, a mental fight in our own minds, um, those, me those emotional and mental arguments that we have, we will run out of energy at being able to fight that. And then we run away from that. And even that has only so much bandwidth that we can handle for running away. And then we get to the point where we kind of freeze and we're kind of like that deer in the headlights kind of thing where we don't know what to do. We feel stuck. We can't move forward. We stay in that state of fear for too long. And what ends up happening is we will flow into a fawn state, which is where we know things are right, are not right. We know things are abusive and it's kind of like you can't beat them. So you join them. And so then you start taking on the attributes and the qualities of the people that are negative, that are abusive, that are, you might defend them, you might see their side, you might um, kind of go down this path of believing that this is the way things have to be, right? And so understanding that this just it's kind of like a time lapse of how long you stay in that state of fear, right? So fight is the first response, then uh, flight, fawn, or freeze, and then fawn. So understand that coming out of those states, so when you're in that fawn state where you're just kind of going along and you uh, maybe are people-pleasing, maybe you are um, agreeing with your aggressors or abusers, and you just kind of you join in and you start acting like them and even and that's going to drain your energy just like I talked about in the beginning stage that's going to drain your energy when you start um, if you're you know if in Rome do as the Romans do kind of thing and you know that that doesn't align with things that you value in your heart then it's going to drain your energy and you're going to feel low vibration. You're not going to feel good. You're going to feel depressed, angry, anxious, frustrated, all of those kind of things. It all ties into fear. And our only way out of that is to start shifting and focusing on that love energy and bringing more of that energy into our lives. And so that comes with questioning, you know, whether or not questioning and examining our beliefs and our expectations. My dad bought cars for all my siblings except me. I have seven seven siblings. Um, no, I am not trained as a psychologist or nor do I have a degree. I have taken um, a lot of my own personal experience. Um, I have done, I have studied the subject quite intensely of dealing with trauma and for myself I've done a lot of healing work a lot of um, therapy group therapy 12-step groups a bunch of different things in order to sh learn to shift myself from those negative um, depressing anxious thoughts and shifting that into a happier perspective and what I do is I share my own personal experience strength and hope in hopes that you are able to take something from what I share and actually apply it to your life. Take what you like, leave the rest. If you don't feel that it resonates with you, you think that's a bunch of bullshit. What the hell is Tina talking about? I don't get it. She's nuts. Then don't, don't take that. Don't apply it. But if there's one thing that I might say that hits for you that you can actually apply to your life, please take that, apply it start to use it and I hope that helps shift you into that happier place so like I had mentioned guys number one start paying attention to the energy of yourself when you're around certain people when you're around certain environments when you do certain activities when you listen to certain things does it bring your energy up or does it drain your energy that's a good indicator if it's draining your energy, you may want to take a step back from it and start to go into examining your expectations and your beliefs. What were your beliefs around it? Did you believe that if you did this certain thing, you were going to get a certain outcome from this and you didn't end up getting that? Um, did you have certain expectations around things? Um, and were those expectations met and you're still not 
feeling good. Um, so sometimes we believe that when certain things happen that we will become happy. And then those certain things happen and we're like, damn, I don't actually feel happier. I thought this was going to be the thing. I thought this was going to make me feel happier. Um, I've seen this. Uh, people will set goals and then they'll achieve the goals. And then they're like, damn, I'm still not happy. Now what do I do, right? So number two is examining and understanding what our expectations are and what the beliefs were that we had. Um, and then number three is, are we actively choosing to incorporate more of the things in our lives that are actually going to make us happier? Um, or are we actively choosing to avoid those things and we are more focused on maybe making the people around us happier and sacrificing our own happiness in the process of doing that. So understanding these three things and starting to look at and examine these three things in your life is going to help you with being able to um, increase your happiness and start to be aware of what is draining your happiness. So. It's a real discipline to make a conscious choice, a conscious effort to choose to be happy and to start eliminating the things in our lives that are causing us a great deal of unhappiness and choosing a different path. And sometimes all that we need to choose in that particular circumstances is to change our mind at how we view the situation. So guys, I hope you found that was helpful. Uh, if this is your first time listening to my live, um, I do upload all of the lives on my YouTube channel. Please go check that out. Go to Coach Tina B125 and click on the subscribe button so that you get notified once I have uploaded the video to the YouTube channel. Okay? So, guys, hope that was helpful. Hope you have a great day, great night, whatever time it is for you at whatever part of the world you're at. And um, I am going to be getting to bed because it's very late and I've got an early morning. So thanks, guys. Have a great night. Take care. Bye.